In this video, we're going to take a look at the sum, difference, and double angular identities for trigonometric functions. Now, before we do that, let's take a look at the following expressions and decide which ones are equal. So we have triple a sum, square root of a sum, square of a number, and reciprocal of a sum. So you need to decide which of these four, or if all of them, are the same as the ones on the right side here when we expand it. So pause the video now and decide which ones are equal. All right, if you've taken a look at them very carefully, you will find that if I triple a sum, it actually is the same as the sum of the numbers tripled. So the first expression is the only one that we can actually distribute the three into the brackets. Square rooting of a sum, we can't take uh, each of the square roots individually. If we square a binomial, we can't square each of the numbers individually. And we can't separate a reciprocal by splitting up into two reciprocals. So in general, function operations are not usually distributed over addition or subtraction. And this is true of um, the trigonometric functions as well. So this will lead us into the sum and difference identities. So there are six um, functions here, and based on sine, cos, and tan. So I'm going to just write them down, and you can um, copy them down as well. Now, these identities don't have to be memorized, but they should be, you should be able to identify them and recognize them quite quickly. So just to go over them briefly, oh, we have a sine in brackets alpha plus beta. So notice that it's a sine alpha and cos beta, and then we have a cos alpha and a sine beta, and there's a plus sign in the middle that matches the plus sign. For the subtraction, or the difference, in the middle, the only difference between the first one and the second identity is that it's a minus sign. Uh, for cos alpha plus beta and cos alpha minus beta, notice that the first two terms assigned this time are both cos alpha and cos beta, and then the second two terms being multiplied at the back are sine alpha and sine beta. Now notice that for plus, it is now minus, and it's minus in the binomial, it is now plus. Uh, for the tan alpha plus beta, um, it's a whole actually rational expression. And we can see that it's tan alpha plus beta, tan beta on the top. But for the second one, it's a minus. And then the signs are switched on the denominator. So it's going to be 1 minus tan alpha tan beta. But in the second one, it's going to be 1 plus tan alpha tan beta. So we're going to use these sum and difference identities um, to show how to obtain the double angle identities. So uh, the first one here is sine 2 alpha. Now, we're going to pretend that, well, we don't actually have to pretend. We know that 2 alpha means that we have two angles that are identical. So I can actually expand this to be sine alpha plus alpha. Because alpha plus alpha we know is 2 alpha. So using our sum identity for sine, we're going to expand this to be sine alpha cos alpha, because that's what it says in our identity. Is going to be plus cos alpha because that's our first expression, first variable, and then sine alpha. So everything happens to be alpha here because they were identical angles. And because sine alpha times cos alpha, we have two of these sets. We actually have two times sine alpha cos alpha. Now, what this means is not just, they're not just stuck or written together, but these are actually time symbols in between here. We don't usually write them, but I'll stress it now so that you understand that it's 2 times sine alpha times cos alpha. We can do the same thing for cos 2 alpha. So this will be alpha plus alpha. And we're going to use this alpha plus beta identity. So we have cos alpha, cos alpha, and then minus sine alpha, sine alpha. So we're using this identity, and every time we use this identity, we are going to expand it using this expression that we have over here. So cos alpha times cos alpha means we have cos squared alpha minus sine squared alpha. Now, cos, cos 2 alpha is actually special. There are actually two other possibilities that we can um, convert it to. So I'm going to show you here next. So in order to do this, we're going to recall our Pythagorean identity, where sine squared theta 
plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. And from here, we know that sine squared alpha can be 1 minus cos squared alpha. Sorry, not alpha, theta. And we can also say that cos squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the expression from before that we show that cos 2 alpha from up here is cos squared theta, sorry, cos squared alpha minus sine squared alpha. I'm going to show you two other conversions here. So I'm going to write this down here for both of these. And I'm going to show you how we can actually write two other identities from this. So from this first expression, I'm going to replace the sine squared alpha with this 1 minus cos squared alpha. So when I do that, I'm going to make sure that I use brackets because I'm going to substitute this into this space here. And I have to remember that I'm subtracting 1. So really, it's cos squared alpha minus 1 and then plus cos squared alpha. Cos squared alpha plus cos squared alpha means that we have 2 cos squared alpha, and then minus 1. Uh, for the cos 2, the second one, theta, or so, sorry, cos 2 alpha, we can now substitute, let's say that cos squared theta is actually now equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. So I'm going to place or replace the cos squared theta with the sine squared, oh, and I should be using the same variable here, so I'm going to change this back to alpha. And then we have sine squared alpha. So what I've done is I've replaced cos squared alpha with this 1 minus sine squared. It doesn't matter whether you use theta or alpha. Um, I've just used a different variable here because we've been using alpha when we use the identities because there were two variables. And we simplify to be 1 minus 2 sine squared alpha. All right, lastly is the tan 2 alpha. So tan 2 alpha Remember, it's 10 alpha plus alpha. And we can use the identity uh, from above with the sum um, identity. And this gives us 10 alpha plus another 10 alpha, all divided by 1 minus 10 alpha times 10 alpha. And this simplifies to 2 10 alpha on the top because you have 10 alpha plus, so that gives us two of them. But when we multiply tan alpha times tan alpha, we get tan squared alpha. All right, so I'm going to write this down into this box here. All right, so here we have our double angle identities. Now, you don't, again, have to memorize them, but definitely it's useful if you do have them kind of memorized or be able to recognize them quickly. So you don't always have to look back. I noticed that also cos 2 alpha has three possible, uh, I guess, choices or identities that it can convert to. All right, so let's take a look at some examples. So this first one here is we want to take a look at how to expand and simplify. So expanding means we're going to write it bigger. And sine 2 alpha, or theta, sorry, can be expanded according to this. So that means that we have 7 times, and according to this, um, we get 2, and then sine theta, and then times cos theta. So that's using the identity, and this is how we plug in where the angles go. 7 times 2 is 14. So we have 14 times sine theta times cos theta. All right, let's take a look at a different one. So here we have... 2 pi plus theta, and we need to use the sum identity for cosine. So we have cos 2 pi times cos theta minus sine 2 pi times sine theta. So I know that cos 2 pi, if you think back to the graph, that's up here, that's going to be 1, so 1 times cos theta. Sine 2 theta, when we think back to the graph, is 0. So minus 0 times sine theta. So this whole expression in the second piece is 0. So we only have left cos theta. 
All right, let's take a look at different examples. So here we want to simplify each expression to a, a single trigonometric function. So instead of expanding, we're now going reverse and we're simplifying. So this is where recognition of uh, the identities is very useful. So I can see here that I have a 6x cos x, and then this time I have a minus. That means it must be related to um, the difference um, identity for sine, because notice it's sine and cos, and then cos and sine. So the 6x would represent my alpha, and the x would represent my beta. So going in reverse, I get sine 6x and then minus x, because that's what the identity tells us. So we can use the identity both forwards and backwards. And this equals sine 5x when I simplify the brackets. All right, lastly, this one here, it kind of looks like the double identity for sine. So remember that's going to be sine 2 theta equals 2 times sine theta times cos theta. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to create this expression somewhere in here. So I can do that by factoring the 18 to be 9 times 2, and then I have sine 3x and then times cos 3x. Now this 3x here and here represents our theta. Okay, so when I work backwards, that means I'm going to replace this theta here, this theta here, with whatever that expression is. So here I have 9, and then this whole thing becomes sine 2 theta. So it's going to become sine 2, and theta in my case is 3x. So it's going to be 2 times 3x. So now we have 9 times sine 6x. All right, so now I've showed you how to apply um, the double angle identities. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is how to find the exact trigonometric values for other special angles besides the pi over 6, pi over 3, and pi over 4. Now to do this, however, we do need to use our special triangles that we already do know. So let's label them as pi over 6, pi over 3, 1 root 3, and 2. And we have the pi over 4, pi over 4 triangle, 1, 1 root 2. Now remember these are for right triangles only. Now, some useful angles that we want to use is pi over 2, pi over 3, pi over 4, and pi over 6. And the reason is because all of these angles can have a common denominator of 12. So we just rewrite these um, as equivalent fractions with a denominator of 12. Okay, and then let's take a look at this first one. So we want to find the exact values for the expression cos 5 pi over 12. So from my combinations here, I can see that if I add 3 pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 12, I will get 5 pi over 12. So I'm going to replace the 5 pi over 12 with 3 pi over 12 and 2 pi over 12. And this reduces to pi over 4 plus pi over 6. So using my cos sum identity, I'm going to expand this to be cos pi over 4 times cos pi over 6 minus sine pi over 4 times sine pi over 6. All right, using my special triangles, I'm going to now replace each of these trig functions or trig expressions with the appropriate um, values. Cos pi over 4 is 1 over root 2. Cos pi over 6 is root 3 over 2 minus 1 over root 2 times a half using my first triangle. So I can now simplify this to be root 3 minus 1. And since both of them have the same denominator, I have 2 root 2. Let's rationalize our denominator by multiplying top and the bottom by root 2. And so I get root 6 minus root 2. And on the bottom, I get 2 times root 4, which is going to be 4. So now we've got a special angle, or special ratio, for cos 5 pi over 12, which we weren't able to do before.